You know what it is. That's right. It's time to talk money with your money nerd and financial coach. Now, tighten those purse strings and open those ears. It's the Money Talk with Tiff podcast. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Money Talk with Tiff podcast. So today I'm super excited because I have Kevin Palmer on the line. Now, Kevin, he hit rock bottom around his mid-20s. And after he hit his rock bottom, he said, I'm going to start a podcast. So he started Next Level University, which is a podcast that's listened to in over 125 countries with over a thousand downloads, which I'm just like, kudos to you. He's given nearly a hundred speeches and had the opportunity to do hundreds of coaching calls. Now he's grown his podcast into a multi six figure business and he is here to tell us how he did it. Now, one thing that he does emphasize is consistency, commitment, habits, mindset, confidence, fear, relationships, limiting beliefs. So you know that this conversation is going to be very in depth with a lot of those topics because you know how we do. So thank you so much, Kevin, for coming on the show today. Today. Thank you so very much for having me. Yeah, especially consistency. If we're going to talk about anything, especially money, consistency goes hand in hand with making money. So I am very happy to be here. I appreciate you. And I'm excited for our energies to match on the air today. Yes, yes. <laughs> Y'all, when he first came on, I was like, oh my gosh, your energy is freaking contagious. And I'm like, this is going to be so fun. So let's just hop right into it. So I get a lot of people that come to me like, Tiffany, I want to start a podcast. I want to start talking like and really I'm like just hit record it's it's really that easy but to speak with someone that has made it into a multi six-figure business I think there are some very valuable things and y'all I already said that I was going to take notes my, my dang self so with that being said if somebody was interested in getting into podcasting what would you say would be the first step or what was your first step yeah, I, my first step, and I don't think my my process was typical by any stretch of the imagination. Somebody had me on their podcast, and at the end of it, I said, imagine if you could do that for a living. And my other friend said, well, you can. There's people out there that do it. So I Googled everything I needed, and I went above and beyond, and I got all the stuff that I needed at that point. I think for most people, it actually starts more in the mind than it does with any actions. You got to ask yourself why. There's a lot of people who start podcasts because it's the sexy, trendy thing to do. And at one point, a YouTube channel was the trendy, sexy thing to do. But there's a bunch of people who stopped doing that. So the understanding that there are roughly 3 million podcasts that have been created out of those 3 million podcasts, an estimated 50 to 75% are no longer in production. So they don't even podcast anymore. They did a couple episodes and they said, it's not for me. So the number one piece of advice I give is you've got to ask yourself, why? Why am I actually starting this podcast in the grand scheme of things? The second thing I would say is, what problem am I hoping to solve for my community? At the end of the day, people tune into podcasts to get their problem solved. You listen to Money Talk because you want to learn more about money, right? So it's very important to understand what am I actually going to be talking about here? And then the third thing is, am I willing to be consistent? This is my frame. You have to treat your podcast like a business. If I go to the pizza shop that I've never tried before and it's closed, I'm going to go to another pizza shop and I may never go to that one again. If I go to the pizza shop I like and it's closed, I got to go find another pizza spot and that could become my new favorite. I treat the podcast that way. That's why we do an episode every day is we want to be in our, our community's pocket every single day. So I always try to start from an awareness standpoint. I would ask yourself those three questions. But to Tiffany's point, all you need is a microphone that plugs into your laptop and you can literally use your webcam and you got yourself a podcast. You got to find a podcast host. I always, I've used Buzzsprout. That's what I recommend. It's easy. And you click a couple buttons. It sends it out to Apple for you and you're pretty good to go. You got to get artwork and stuff like that. But you can get started with a podcast for $100, right? Less than $100 if you want a different microphone. But the one I always suggest I have next to me and it's $79. Audio-Technica ATR 2100. So it's very simple to get started, all things considered, just like anything else. It's easy to sign up to the gym. It's hard to show up every day. Oh, I love that. And you hit so many gems. I'm like, okay, let's let's back. Let's go back. Yeah, a you little got bit. me fired okay. up talking about podcasting, <laughs> Tiffany. We're in trouble. 
<laughs> I know. All right. So let's start with the first thing you said, because I said we need to dial in on that a little bit more. So knowing your why. So when you started your podcast, what was your why? I so I grew up as a child who didn't have a ton of money and I didn't go to college because that wasn't the route that I wanted to choose. I found success financially in my mid 20s. And I opened my final pay stub of my most successful financial year. I made $100,000 at 26. And when I opened that pay stub, I realized that I wasn't any happier. My bank account was happier, but nothing about me was any happier. And I realized in that moment that for most of my life, I had lived unconsciously. The opposite of unconscious is hyperconscious. And I wanted to help other people become hyperconscious. That was my initial why. So my first podcast was called the Hyperconscious Podcast. And my why power or my why behind it was I want to have conversations that other people might not have the courage or the vulnerability or the desire to have. And my ultimate goal was I wanted to help people understand themselves at a deeper level. That was my initial starting point. And eventually that shifted and transitioned to my co-host and I, my business partner and I have a deep belief that if the world had more self-improvement, we would have less problems in it. And that's really the through line of, of why we do what we do. And then I'll, I'll add this point as well, Tiffany. Many people start out in the beginning, and this is my favorite way to say it. They have their P's in the wrong order. They start a podcast for profit not for purpose or passion. And let me tell you, you're not going to make money right away. You may never make money depending on how long you do it. But what you can do is you can practice your purpose. The second you turn this microphone on, if you're talking about something you, you love, you can be fulfilled. You can be aligned there. So make sure you have your P's in the right order. Make sure you start for purpose. Find a way to make it profitable. Don't start for profit and then try to convince yourself you're, you're passionate about it. Oh my gosh. And I tell people that all the time, not just with podcasting, but with businesses as well, yeah. like people trying to get into entrepreneurship and stuff. You have to have a purpose. The purpose comes first because otherwise you're just going to be miserable. Like mm -hmm. I had a business that I did during COVID and that was only because Money Talk with Tiff had slowed down. And I found made quite a bit of money and I was okay, but I was miserable, like miserable out of my mind. And so I said, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go back to Money Talk with Tiff because that's where I find passion. And going back to, for instance, my why on why I started the podcast, my business started with a blog and with the blog, it's only about me. It's like my thoughts, what I believe, things like that. And so I was like, I want to kind of highlight other people because I'm like, I might know quite a bit, but I don't know everything. And so I wanted to start bringing people on the podcast in order to interview them and get to know what they're doing. And my purpose was, I believe that the way out of poverty is ideas. And so I'm like, if I can spread ideas to the world, <laughs> let's just say the world, then you never know who might latch on to that idea and make it profitable or they're like I never knew that existed and so that's how, why I started my podcast. Hey it's Tiffany are you interested in starting a podcast? We well, can get up to two months of free podcasting service from Lipson with the code money talk. Get your show on Apple Podcasts and Spotify anywhere you want. Get critical stats to help you grow. Find all the tools and support you need to sound your very best. And you can even do video. Really bring your podcast to life with Lipson. You can use code again, money talk to get two months of free podcasting service. This is what I use to get my podcast to your listening ears. Enjoy. Let's get into transitioning a little bit. Let's get into how, okay, so once somebody starts, okay, so we answered the three questions, we're good to go there. Now, when it comes to growing a podcast, because I get questions about that as well, what were some things that you, I want to say, ran into or some hurdles that you met along the way? One of the biggest things is understanding how slow it is, R really, I and I don't know that I can really give the actual understanding of how slow it can be. But we had 1000 downloads our first year, we had more than that yesterday. And that's five years later, but that never would have happened if we stopped in the beginning. So understanding the time perspective is super important. I would say when it comes to growth, 
I don't think we struggled because we didn't know what we were supposed to be doing. It was very much, I think we were doing pretty well considering what we know. But what I learned along the way was the power of your community. If you really want to grow your podcast, it's like growing a business really at the end of the day, but it's one where if you can pour into your community every day, if you're in your DMs starting conversations with people, you will grow faster. If you're going on other podcasts, your show will grow faster. If you're doing one-on-one coaching, your show will grow faster because you're building a family. You're building ambassadors for your podcast. So the biggest thing that I have seen with many of our clients before they they came to us was this. My show isn't growing and I don't know why. Okay, cool. Answer these questions. Who's your ideal listener? I don't know. Okay, cool. What problems are you solving for your listener? I don't know. Okay, cool. Those are two things to just directly look at. If you don't know your listener, you can't speak to them. If you don't know your listeners problems, you can't help them solve them. And another big one I see is titles. You have to reverse engineer in your mind, what is my ideal listener going through? And what would they click on? One of the reasons I see shows that don't grow is because the host chooses a title that they would click on, not that their listeners would click on. And I think that's an important marketing message overall. But those are some of the some of the biggest ones. And then an important through line is this. So starting a podcast is the foundation. And then it's you can upgrade your microphone and that brings you up a little bit. And then you can get on YouTube with a webcam and that's the foundation of that. And then you get a better camera, right? And then your social media promotion is at first, it's just you saying, I have a podcast. Awesome. And then it's pictures every time you drop an episode. Awesome. And then it's videos of you from the podcast. Awesome. So I think a lot of people assume it's going to grow with the same effort when usually it's going to grow directly in connection with the effort you put in and not at the same size. You're going to put level 10 effort and get level two results in the beginning. But that understanding, if the product isn't getting better the listens most likely will not increase. And you have to be obsessed with that every single day. Oh, that is good stuff. And to tie into that and tie into what you said before, a hard lesson that I've learned is the whole consistency thing. So I wasn't consistent when I, when I started, I was good. And then you fizzle out, it goes, and I would go like months without releasing an episode. Now my audience that I knew personally, they're like, okay, Tiffany, where's my episode? But it wasn't until I went to FinCon last year and I met a guy, a retirement answer man, and he's been doing it for seven years or something. He said, never missed an episode. And he told me, he said, Tiffany, kind of like what you said earlier in the interview, he's like, if you're hitting it off with a guy, y'all are going out, having fun, enjoying it. And then all of a sudden he stands you up. How would you feel? And it was in that moment. I was like, Oh, I'm so sorry, audience. Um, (laughs) I'll do better. No, but that's when I started becoming consistent. And I've seen consistent growth as a result of that. We can't emphasize that enough when it comes to your brand, when it comes to your product, when it comes to your service, your podcast, whatever it is you're doing, you have to stay consistent because Kevin hit it right on the head. He's if people, their favorite pizza shop and their clothes, they're like, I still want some pizza. Where am I going to go? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's very much like what your favorite TV show is on the same station, the same night of the week at the same time. If it's not on you're you have to go find something else to watch and you lose trust. You really, yeah, you lose trust with your audience and it, it breaks rapport a little bit and they might forget about you. I think that there's, there's three, there's three buckets of listeners. There's cold eyes. There's people who don't know you. They don't like you. They don't trust you. So your audience, when I came on here today, they're cold. They, they don't know me. They don't like me. They don't trust me. Hopefully by the end, they will like me and, and they will know me and they will trust me. Then you have warm listeners. These are people who listen to your episodes. These are the people who are messaging you saying, Tiff, come on, what are we doing here? You got to get your stuff together. And then this is probably the biggest bucket of listeners. These are lost eyes. These are people who know you. They like you. They trust you but they forgot about you. They have lives, they change jobs, they don't commute anymore. And if you can understand at all times, you have to try to grow all three of these buckets and you have to warm up the people who you've lost. That really is an important thing too when it comes to growth. People wonder, I went from a thousand episodes, a thousand downloads this month to 200, what happened? People went somewhere else or they got busy. You have to try to re-engage them through social media or whatever it is. 
Awesome. Awesome. That those guys, y'all, <laughs> these are some gems right here. So I hope you all are taking notes if you have a podcast or you're thinking about a podcast. And I'm like, I might have to have you back on because sure. we only scratched the surface of things that we could talk about. But going back to knowing your audience, I know that they like it within 15, 20 minutes per episodes. So y'all definitely tap into this episode and I will definitely have Kevin back. Now, Kevin, if people were interested in learning more more about you, where could they find you? Yeah, our podcast is called Next Level University. We do an episode every single day, over a thousand episodes. So if you want some self-improvement, we're there for you every day. And if you want to talk to me, you can just send me a DM. My Instagram handle is at neverquitkid. I do my own social media. I do my own DMs. I'm happy to answer anything. If you have a question about podcasting, just send it over. I will answer it. You don't have to pay me. You don't have to give me any money. I'm happy to add value where I can. That's my ultimate goal. Oh, that is so awesome. And thank you so much for being such an awesome person, Kevin. This was my pleasure. And if you all didn't catch all of that information, I will definitely have it in the show notes. And and also I'll have the links to the mics and stuff that he had mentioned also along with some stuff that I've used. So thank you so much, Kevin. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much, Tiff. This was truly wonderful and you're awesome. And your your community is very happy, very lucky to have an awesome host like you at the helm. Oh, thank you. Don't make me cry. (laughs) Bye, (laughs) y'all. Thank you for listening, joining, and being a part of the Money Talk with Tiff podcast this week. You can check Tiff out every Thursday for a new Money Talk podcast. But if you just can't wait until next week, you can listen to previous podcast episodes at moneytalkwitht.com or follow Tiff on all social media platforms at Money Talk with T. Until next time, spend wise by spending less than you make. A word to the money wise is always sufficient.